Hi everyone, it's May. Just a quick disclaimer before we get into the video. I had a problem with my camera today, so it actually wasn't recording any of my overhead footage for this video, and I didn't realize it until after we finished filming. But I did go back and film extra footage of the pens, um, so we can all see the details of each pen that Gordon's talking about. You will see some frames like this one here, where he's showing the pen to the overhead camera. So I apologize for the mistake, and I hope this video is still enjoyable. I think it came out really well, and it's a really fun video. So please enjoy watching, and feel free to leave any comments or feedback as always. Thank you! Hi everyone! <laughs> Welcome back to another video. Um, I have Gordon here today for a pen collection video. So I thought of doing this um, video because I feel like we've shared our team members' planners a lot, <laughs> but um, some of us have collections that might be, other collections that might be interesting to share as well. And I thought of Gordon for his co pen collection. Um, uh, Gordon, you're very mysterious with your pens. You never bring them to work, <laughs> um, but I hear about them. So I kind of, personally wanted to see your collection too. <laughs> to start off, I want to ask some questions and we'll go through the pens. Um, when did you first start using fountain pens? Yeah, I think I started around like 2012, maybe 2013. Mm -hmm. um, I got into fountain pens through like gel pens, like specifically Muji, like a lot of people. I think that kind of grew into like, I wanted a pen that looked a little bit nicer and that led me to like the Lamy Safari mm -hmm. rollerball. Um, but then I was like, what is this other kind of pen that they also sell, right? And that's when I got the Lamy Safari fountain pen. And then through Lamy, I kind of like moved up. So I got like mm -hmm. an AL Star. Um, I tried a couple other metal, metal, other metal pens. And then Lamy 2000, of course. Um, and that then kind of branched into what we have today. Okay. <laughs> so you were right. You were writing with them in college and stuff. Um, yeah, closer to like the end of college, uh, mm -hmm. but that's kind of when I first first started for mm -hmm. sure. Um, do you would you say you now use fountain pens exclusively? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's so much that like oh I can't write with other pens. It's just more so I don't think I would write at all if I didn't have fountain pens. Um, yeah, I, I, they're almost ex an excuse for me mm -hmm. to write rather than like, oh, I can't do this unless I have a fountain pen. I see. <laughs> Are you a writer? Like, do you write a lot? <laughs> uh, n no, not a lot actually. Um, I, I journal every morning, but it's only like a page a day. Um, and then I use a fountain pen in my planner as well. Mm -hmm. um, but that's really about it. Mm -hmm. So it's really more like you're are you inspired to write when you have your pens with you? I, I wouldn't like, it's more like, hmm, that's a, that's an interesting question. I mean, it, it's like interesting to me because like I used to never really write that much and I guess I use pens for drawing mostly. But mm. I, I've also started writing a lot more because of like my very tiny like collection of yeah. pens. Yeah. So I think yeah. we'll get into this a little bit later, but like, I think, yeah, my pens do, I guess, inspire me to write because <laughs> I wouldn't be inspired otherwise. <laughs> so we'll, we'll take a look at some of your pens. Um, how many pens do you have? I, I think I have like 17 total. I didn't actually count until yesterday when I yeah. asked you to. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, to some people that's a lot, but actually to some people that's right. like quite a small collection. <laughs> so let's like go through some of them. Um, can you tell us uh, what these pens are? Like the name of the pen and maybe like the nib size? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Here we have my uh, two vanishing points. I used to only have one, but then I realized I couldn't do this. So now I have two. <laughs> one for each hand. This right here is probably my oldest fountain pen and you can actually tell um, at the end here, it's actually worn out a little bit um, from its service. and. That's it's, that's so cool. Like, I've heard about the matte 
black wearing off, but not so much like the metal or like the polished metal finish. Mm -hmm. It's not till recently too, but I actually noticed like the nib is worn out a little bit mm -hmm. to the coating on the top there. But this is like the oldest fountain pen that you still have, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Because you mentioned your first one was probably a safari. Yeah, it was the charcoal black one. Mm -hmm. And I've upgraded that one to this one, which is uh, the Lamy Petrol. I've also put the calligraphy nib on this. I think um, it's a really cool option for people that have never tried like architect nib before. Very approachable mm -hmm. price point. And really fun too. This one is probably the most regular pen I have. <laughs> um, and it's not even that regular for a lot of people. It's just the Platinum 3076 in Laurel Green. Um, and then I have the Ultra Extra Fine nib on this one. I would really love to get a cooler Platinum 3776, but they never make it in the, the mm, they never make like the cooler models in the Ultra Extra Fine nib. And do you, then, how do you like the ultra f extra fine? <laughs> I, I love it. And, and so I, I think like one thing that I also love from Platinum is their rose gold finish, but all the special editions, like the finest they nib, the finest nib that they make is usually just the fine, which is not mm. fine enough. <laughs> um, and I know you can swap the nibs, but um, I need them to match. Like, and so, which kind of leads to this pen. This is the um, Nagasawa 3776 in a rose gold finish. Um, they actually made this one an extra fine, which is, which, which is it's not ultra extra fine, but it's good <laughs> enough. And kind of what's special about this one is it has a, a, a bungle box uh, converter. I got this one actually, like I think in 2018, mm -hmm. for some reason, they were at the Long Island Pen Show. <laughs> and the Long Island Pen Show, for people I've never been, is like tiny. Mm -hmm. And it's like not that popular. I don't even know if they're still doing it. And you went. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, I heard Bungle Box was going to be there. And this is like the first time Bungle Box did anything in, in the US. That's so weird. Why did yeah. they go to Long Island? <laughs> yeah, right? And so I was like, okay. Um, and then I got one of their hand painted converters. When I got the converter, it's actually um, gold, it had gold hardware. And so I swapped out the hardware on the converter to rose, rose gold. That's so, so funny. it would match. Yeah. So you took apart like all the parts of the converter? Yeah. I didn't even know you can do that. Is that easy to do? <laughs> it wasn't the easiest thing okay. in the world, but I like, you can't have a gold converter <laughs> in a rose gold pen, right? I would think like if this was gold, like I would probably just like get a gold pen to match. Yeah, but rose yeah. gold is cooler. <laughs> so you like rose gold? I like rose gold more, yeah. So you took apart the converter, got another rose gold converter. Well, it came, it came with a rose gold converter. Oh, this pen? Yeah, yeah, yeah it came with oh, a rose so gold. Oh, so you switched like the... the I swapped the hardware, yeah, um, yeah. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, hot take also. <laughs> champagne version is better, I think. Wait, is this champagne? Yeah. I see, I see. It's very controversial. <laughs> <laughs> you have this very exciting pen. This is a Presky. Yeah. From when? This was, I don't know, but I just know, people need to know this was the original, original run, not the re-release. Right. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. Yeah, I, I got this one actually secondhand. Mm. Um, and I think this was my first sailor. Really? Yeah, I just went for it. Wow, <laughs> and a very interesting color too. Yeah, yeah. Very bold. Yeah. I see like pens that I like recognize and then something like this that I have no idea what this pen is. So do you want to talk about this pen? Yeah, so this this pen um, is probably like in a weird way my most sentimental pen. That's saying a lot because I'm not very sentimental <laughs> about my pens. Uh, this You're one, not I'm... sentimental about your pen? No, like... Yeah, if I okay. if I love them, I keep them. If I mm. don't, then I, I don't. You know, and if I love something and then I stop loving it, then I'm like, that's okay too. Okay. <laughs> um, but this one, I think it was my first time at the DC Pen Show. So this is a Franklin Christoph 31, mm. 
And I don't know if you witnessed it at the two Penn shows you went to, but like Franklin Kristoff is kind of like a big deal at Penn shows. So they have, they set up their table in the morning and they put like a tablecloth over it. And then right when the, like, and people kind of like line up and crowd around because what they do is they sell like a lot of like random tester uh, prototypes and right. colors that they don't normally stock. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like right when the pen show starts, they lift the curtain and start, people start like grabbing and <laughs> rummaging through. So you were one of those people? <laughs> yeah, yeah. First time in 2017. Another interesting thing about this model in particular, or this material in particular, it was made by Jonathan Brooks. And then it also has a matte finish, which you don't typically see in acrylic pens or pens in general. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look as interesting in video I feel, but in person I think you can see the depth even though it's like a matte finish. It almost looks like it would have like weird texture on it, but it's just the pattern. Yeah. It also has a very special nib on it. Uh, so this is a Franklin Kristoff, they call it a SIG nib, which is like a stub italic grind. So it's like in between a stub and an italic. And it was by, um, their nib grinder at the time, whose name was uh, Jim Rouse. Uh, fortunately, he's no longer with us. Um, but yeah, from my first experience working with a nib grinder, he customized mm -hmm. it for me. And at it, the pen show? Yeah, at the pen show. And it just, I don't know, writes very particularly in a pleasing way to me. Um, I, I think the closest thing I can compare it to is like a felt tip pen. Mm -hmm. And it's just not something I've experienced in any other like pen mm -hmm. yet. Very cool. Did you go to the pen show, like DC pen show, like knowing you were going to purchase this pen? Like, did you know about their process and like the material? I, I don't remember. Like sometimes they post teasers on Instagram. So I don't remember if I was like, oh, I need to get that one. I knew that they did collaborations like this and mm -hmm. I, I knew about Jonathan Brooks. I don't think it was a complete surprise, but like it was cool because like they had like five different, they have like a tray of like 10 of these, but each one is different right. because like the material is like handmade. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think another thing I really like about this is like, there's no clip on it, uh, which isn't typical for most of their pens in this model at least. And then this pen. <laughs> so big what is this pen yeah i think this is my most expensive pen this is a, a leonardo um you can tell it kind of has the same energy as this mm -hmm. pen it's because the material was made by the same person jonathan brooks okay. um, and they call this mother of pearl and something i don't know if it's like how rare this specific one is but i did have to email them specifically to ask for can you make this one in rose gold and they did that for you? Yeah, because wow. it wasn't listed on the website, but I was like, they have um, Rose Gold trim, so I should at least ask. And who, who is Jonathan Brooks? <laughs> uh, Jonathan Brooks, uh, he owns, he is the owner, founder of his company called Carolina Pen Co. So he makes his own hand turned pens, uh, but what he's really known for is um, the acrylic that he makes. Um, so he was kind of like one of the first people to make swirly acrylic specifically for pens. I remember hearing stories about how he would like go to like makeup stores with like his daughters to find pigments and stuff to oh, use in um, his acrylic blanks. And then I think like since then uh, he's become very prolific and at the same time he's helped I think this handmade pen community grow a lot by teaching other people, which is something I really kind of admire and appreciate about him. Yeah, beautiful. Cool. And what nib size is that? So this was originally an extra fine, but May, I don't know if you remember ever actually seeing this pen because I brought it to Yoseka, um, our Greenpoint oh, store yeah. one day so to get mm -hmm. it ground into an architect nib by, by CY. CY. Yeah. Yeah. Extra fine architect nib. I see another interesting one here. Speaking of. <laughs> Speaking of CY, we have CY's uh, Kaisudo Kakari, also featuring his special nib, the Sankusen. 
I've actually, I haven't written with this pen at all.、Um, how do you, how do you like it? <laughs> Are you enjoying it? Yeah. So I think it's weird. I don't really consider this pen part of my collection yet because.、Mm-hmm. Why is that? Because it was gifted, gifted? to me. <laughs> so I'm still figuring out like how I feel about、mm. it. So maybe in a future video. Do you think we should sell this pen at Yosaka? <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> But yeah, this nib is very different than a lot of my other pens, and I think that it's very interesting to use.、Mm-hmm. So it's a very interesting nib, as in the angle matters a lot.、Mm. So if you kind of write like straight up and down, it's a very thin line. And as you kind of write lower, it's a very thick line. I see. So I think it's really de- designed for like Asian characters, where there is a little bit of like you start high and then you end.、Uh-huh. You start、kind、high like, and like then like end、crashing. low. Yeah. <laughs>、uh, at the same time, this horizontal is the same way. If you write really high, it's still really、mm-hmm. thin.、If、you write really low, it's really thick. Yeah, it's it's really funny. So, sometimes when I journal. With this pen, like at the beginning of the, at the top of the page, it'll be very thin. But by the time <laughs> I get to the bottom of the page,、oh, it'll be very wide. Yeah.、Um, That's funny. Yeah. Interesting pen. If anyone's interested,、um, we can talk about it more perhaps later. <laughs> And then I just want to briefly go over this pen.、Um, we showed this pen in our last vlog when we went to the Philly Pen Show, because. Daisy also got one. <laughs> yeah, so this I got this one like way before Daisy did, obviously.、Uh, but it just features, unfortunately, a, a, <laughs> a normal a normal EF nib. Yeah. I think I would love to get one of、uh, Ian's nibs、uh, sometime in the future as well. For those that aren't too familiar with this pen, I think that there's it looks very simple on the outside, but there's actually a lot of like thought and engineering that、right. goes into it. He designed it to be like. The perfect eyedropper,、mm-hmm. and so little things. I, I think like at the time when this pen came out, a lot of people were like eyedroppering like their Kaweco or like you know their random Lamy because they really wanted that、uh, ink capacity. I don't eyedropper my pens, but I can appreciate that thought that went into <laughs> it. So the issue with a lot of eyedroppers is that they leak, and so you'll notice that there's actually like. A ridiculous amount of O-rings in this pen, so there's one here to stop it from leaking from the barrel. But then at the same time, he put two in、oh. the grip section, grip section here, so the ink wouldn't leak through the grip section.、Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you're someone that loves eyedroppering pens, but doesn't, but is like terrified of the idea of it dripping all over. Um, Ian's Ian's got you. Ian's got your back. <laughs> This is the yeah. pen. <laughs> yeah. There's also one more O-ring in the cap. I see. So even if it does leak into the cap, it won't leak out of the it won't leak out of the pen. And then this material too. Some might call it plastic, but it's actually、um, Ultum. I don't know <laughs> the details, but it's a fancy plastic. Yeah. It's not just like plastic. And I think they like did some. Like did a lot of work to make it like as thin as it is, right? Go on his website. He has a lot more information there. It's very cool. Yeah, he's very he's, highly he's thought engineered. About it. He's thought、pen. about it. These two, you know, very well designed, highly engineered, <laughs> cool pens. Yeah.、Um, so I think that's most of your pens here. You like your, as we can see, you like your fineness. Not even fineness. You like your extra fineness.、Um, do you think like you always liked? Extra fine or fine or yeah, I I think like it all started with like you know everyone's Muji point three eight, and that part never changed.、Um, so when I got into fountain pens, it was really just like I needed pens that could still fit that criteria.、Mm-hmm. I experimented with like bigger nibs. Like I've owned a one point one stub <laughs> in my life before,、uh-huh. um, and then I just never used it. Mm, you know,、okay. I I've seen like calligraphy videos and like handwriting videos. I'm like, oh, it'd be cool if I could do that, but it just didn't like manifest into、mm-hmm. real life.、Um, and so, just、I、stick mean, with what I like. You do have some like very interesting nibs, although they're still pretty fine, I guess. Yeah,、they're、yeah. Just a little bit different than your regular. Yeah. Yeah, so I take the extra fine and then make an architect. I take、mm. the extra fine and、mm. then make it a cursive italic.、Um, 
and I think that's enough for me. <laughs> You've mentioned like different pen shows and like different nib grinders and like special like materials made by a specific person. Um, how do you get your like, do you keep up to date with this kind of stuff or how do you get your information about pens? I, I think it's definitely changed over time. Um, I think when I was first getting into pens, like I listened to all the podcasts, I subscribed to all the <laughs> blogs, um, and followed all the websites. And now that I kind of have like pens that I love, I actually try to consume as little as possible because in a weird way, I know the ones that I really do want and really do like will just somehow end up in my life. Oh. I think like this Taiwan anniversary yeah. vanishing point is a good example of that. I had no idea that this existed. I had no idea we were getting it. Mm -hmm. But it just kind of happened. Yeah, and I <laughs> bought it immediately. Yeah. <laughs> In extra fine. <laughs> so this one, big sigh. The gold nib, the gold plated nib only comes in a fine. So oh. it, it's a fine? It's a fine. Oh, it's sad. Fine. Yeah. But it matches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? So, um, so the matching nib color is more important to you than the nib size yes i do think that at some point i'll probably get it ground down mm. maybe architect again um or just like a needle point uh because i do think that i do like to actually find a little bit more kind of going off on that like how do you decide like you have some special pens very cool pens like how do you decide um, when to get a new pen now? <laughs> and do you have some kind of rules or like standards for getting one? Yeah, you gave you actually gave me this question ahead of time, and I tried very hard to think of like a coherent answer. And it's weird because I'm very like rules and like constraints oriented in the rest of my life, but when it comes to my pens, like. I think that the only thing I can say is like, do I love it or not? Because the more I try to write rules, the less true they were. <laughs> For example, like in platinum, I won't go finer than a fine. Like I won't even get a fine. I don't like the platinum fine. Mm -hmm. But then my apres ski, my apres ski, which I love, is a medium fine. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I have no problem with it. So is it kind of like with the vanishing point too, like it's kind of like what just what calls out to you? Yeah. And if you feel like a strong desire for it, like yeah. it's kind of yeah. very intuitive. Yeah, I think it is very intuitive. I think like the only rule I give myself is like, don't use it out of like guilt. Mm. Like if I ever find myself like thinking up a pen or using even like a notebook just because like, oh, I've had this or oh, I spent the money on it up um, or I should ink it because I haven't used it in so long. It's usually a sign to me that it's just time to move on from this product. Like mm -hmm. for me, like I mentioned in the beginning, I journal as an excuse to use my pens. Mm -hmm. So if I'm using pens that I don't like, I'm also not going to journal. <laughs> Right. And I'd rather like enjoy that time than feel have it feel like a chore because at the end of the day I don't need to do it at all, right? Right. <laughs> um, so you don't try you don't like force like a connection with a pen. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. I, I, I if if you were like dating someone <laughs> just because like oh I haven't seen right. them in a while I should like you know you probably shouldn't be dating them right. in the first it's place. Fine. <laughs> um, what do you do with? with those pens that you don't use. Yeah, I, I think this is this is like the tough this is the tough part is always like saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. And I think like every <laughs> every pen is unique in that way. Um, I, I think like if possible I like to pass it on to someone that will actually love it. Um, recently got my partner into fountain pens as well. So that's kind of been a thing. Sometimes like I give them to people that like I've never tried a certain pen before, or depending on the, the pen, I like I'll sell it, mm -hmm. sell it as well. I see. Yeah. One last question is: uh, Do you have an absolute favorite <laughs> from the pens that you have? So, like, if 
your house is on fire and you can only take one single pen, yeah. what would it be? <laughs> yeah, I think the right answer is to say, not my pens. <laughs> I would not take any of them from my pens because I have things that are more important than my pens, hopefully. Oh my god. <laughs> it's not that I love my all my pens equally, <laughs> but I do like go in a lot. I do go through phases with a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Like, but I, what's meaningful to me is that like I would be excited to ink up any of these pens again, and at some point I know I'll actually want to come back to this one. Whereas. If I didn't want to come back to it, I just wouldn't have it. You're not answering my question, Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> so you love them equally. I love them equally, but I'm also okay with letting letting it. Oh my them god! Go. If, this if... is like the least sentimental <laughs> answer. <laughs> he loves them equally. He won't take them if there's a fire. I love them all equally, <laughs> but not of them a lot. <laughs> Okay, great. Thanks for sharing your pens today. Um, I, you know, I'm like fairly new to fountain pens. I just went to my first two pen shows. Exciting. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these pens are like very uh, like new and like exciting for me and I learned a lot. <laughs> so thank you. Um, do you have a hot take? <laughs> Hot, hot take. I, I think I think I find a lot of people compromising on things that they love. Uh -huh. um, I think not just with fountain pens, but a lot of things. And I think like at the time, most of these pens felt really expensive to me, mm -hmm. um, and they felt like big purchases. Mm -hmm. um, but what I've realized from the things that I kept compared to the things I moved on from was whether or not I compromised. Um, so like, I've had Pro Gear Slims before, and a lot of times we get a Pro Gear Slim because it's the cute color, yeah. but it's a little cheaper, <laughs> right? But for a lot, some of us, at least in our hearts, we know we want the full size. We know <laughs> we want the full size. And I think in some ways to get the slim, it's just a constant reminder that you should have got the full right. size. <laughs> that is a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, thank you so much. Um, when will we see you next in our videos? Such a rare appearance. Uh, when my collection grows, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Leave us comments if you have any questions for Gordon or um, what kind of uh, collection you want to see next. We'll see you in our next video. Bye!